So, continuing our exploration into thermal physics, next thing we're going to look at are thermal properties of materials. So, these are the way that specific materials will um, change their temperature or change state. So, these are all specific to materials. So, the things that we need to get our head around are specific heat capacity, uh, latent heat, and then we need to be able to do calculations based on those two things. So, we'll start with specific heat capacity. Um, and Real simple, nice quick definition that you just need to learn, I'm afraid. Uh, specific heat capacity is the energy required to raise the temperature of a substance by one Kelvin without changing the state. So this is about changing the temperature, not the state. So if you change the state, there's something different going on. Um, we're just talking about changing the temperature here. Usually, when we state it, it would be for a kilogram of the, of the mass of the object. So the equation for that is delta Q equals mc delta T. Now, hopefully you remember that that's going to mean that delta Q is the heat energy in joules, m is the mass in kilograms, c will be our specific heat capacity, the new thing that we're meeting, and delta T is going to be the temperature change, and it is in Kelvin because it is a delta T. So remember last time we learned that delta T, when we use the capital T, that means that we're talking about the temperature in Kelvin. Now, if I've got the temperature in Celsius, I just change the form of the equation so slightly. So I'd use delta Q equals mc delta theta. So here the specific heat capacity would be in joules per kilogram per degree C. And I'd use delta theta because that gives me the temperature change in degrees C. But since a change in temperature in degrees C is exactly the same as a change in temperature in degrees Kelvin, the two values will actually be the same for the specific heat capacity, so it doesn't matter too much in this instance. Sometimes it matters a great deal if it's degree C or degree Kelvin. In this particular instance, it doesn't matter at all. So let's just have a look at some examples of specific heat capacity values. So as you can see, there's a big range. And uh, first thing I'd love, you, love for you to notice is that it matters what state the object is in. So if you notice here, we've got water is different to ice or steam. Um, so you do have to make sure that you use the right specific heat capacity. Um, and we've got quite a big range here. Now, large numbers tell you that it takes more energy to change the temperature of a kilogram of that substance. So hopefully, looking at these, it should leap out at you that water has an exceptionally high specific heat capacity. And that's actually really, really important. Um, and it's really important for living things, particularly uh, for you know anything that's warm or in fact cold-blooded. Because what it means is that it takes a big change in energy to change our temperature. So that means that it's easy for us to maintain our temperature because we don't have to lose a lot of, or we can lose a reasonable amount of energy without our temperature to, temperature plummeting. If that number was smaller, our temperature would vary a whole lot more, It'd go up and down a lot, which would be a lot more difficult to, to sustain life. So that value, being so big and so unusually big as well, actually, is one of the little quirks that makes life possible, which is quite cool, really. Okay, so uh, next thing we need to talk about then is latent heat. So latent heat is to do with the energy that's required for changing state. So when I talked about specific heat capacity, I said it's only for changing the temperature. Well, we've got a completely different uh, value to look at when we talk about changing state, because we can only do one of these things at a time. When I put thermal energy into an object, it can either change the temperature or it can change the state. It can't do both at the same time. So latent heat is all about how the energy is used to change the state. So um, we're talking about here basically melting and boiling, uh, cond condensation, vaporization, sublimation. These are the processes that we are talking about. So um, as I said, if I have a pure substance, um, the temperature doesn't change the average potential energy of the surface molecules. It's only changed when we are changing state. So if you have a look here, as I put uh, energy in, so if we're assuming I'm putting energy in over time, 
the temperature can increase until I reach the melting point. And even though I'm still putting energy in, the temperature is not changing. This flat bit tells me that it's changing state. Then once it's all changed state, the temperature begins to increase again till I reach a point where I'm changing the state again and only the state is changing, not the temperature. Um, we call this the latent heat. It, latent means hidden. Um, so it's kind of because you don't see the uh, temperature changing as I put this heat in. So it's like it's hidden heat. It's hidden energy because I'm using it to change the state. But you can't see that on a the thermometer. Okay, so specific latent heats. So the proper definition. Specific latent heat of a substance is the energy required to change the state of unit mass of the substance without changing the temperature. So in other words, the amount of energy required to change the state of one kilogram of an object. So the equation for that is delta Q equals ML. Delta Q is in joules, M is going to be in kilograms, and L is the specific latent heat, which is in joules per kilogram which I'm sure you could have figured out by just looking at the equation, because you lot are that amazing. I know it. Right, so just look at some examples. So if we look for going from ice to water, that means that I'm going from solid to liquid. So that means that this is the specific latent heat of fusion. And it would be the same whichever way I was going. Even if I was going from uh, liquid to solid, it would still be the specific latent heat of fusion and it would still have this value. It's just about the change between the two. It's just whether I'm putting the energy in or the energy out, but the energy change remains the same. Um, so if we're going between a liquid and a gas, or vice versa, that's the specific latent heat of vaporization. And the last one, if I go straight from a solid to a gas, or vice versa, that is the specific latent heat of sublimation. So the direction of the change doesn't matter, you just need to think about which way the energy will be going. And with a little bit of thought, that will be glaringly obvious to you, I'm sure. And again, these numbers vary, uh, vary quite wildly. Um, and they will always be given to you, so there aren't any that you need to know. So, um, before the next time I see you, I would like you to think about how we might go about performing a practical that would let us calculate the values of specific latent heat and uh, specific heat capacity for different materials because this is something that you will need to know for the exam it's something they have explicitly said that they want you to know and it is something that we are going to do therefore so have a good think about it think about what you come up with try and see what's in your own head before you do any research or look it up i want you to use your experience to come up with some suggestions I would rather see something utterly unfeasible that came out of your own head than have a perfect answer that you've just Googled, copied and pasted. So really have a think about it. Okay, so remember if you've got any questions, uh, jot them down, ask me when you see me.